Hey friends, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reamping signals through an actual tube guitar amp using three different microphones. We're going to go over the phase relationship between the microphones and how you can get some really interesting mid rangey vibey tones using this process. Now real quick, the way that I did this is I recorded my guitar using an FM3 modeler, but I also sent the signal through a DI box directly into the computer so that I could reamp it. And then finally I'm using this reamp box with a level control, as you can see right here to prepare the signal for the amplifier after I've recorded it. So essentially I've already recorded all the signals that I need to use. And those of you that are not guitar players can still benefit from this video because I actually reamp some synth tracks as well. Awesome. So if you're stoked, let's get it. Now what you just heard are the two amp modeler guitar tracks and then a little drum track that I have here. I have some other tracks we'll get into in a bit, but essentially that's the sound that I got. And it's not a bad sound. I wouldn't say that these are unusable sounds. They're just not as vibey as I could get with the real thing, okay? Modelers are getting amazing. I love my FM3 and it is incredible, but I'll tell you what, once you understand what this technique can do for you and how fun it can be, uh, you're probably going to switch up your, your thinking when it comes to actually recording guitar versus playing gigs. I'll never not play gigs without that FM3. It is too nice, it's too convenient, and amp modelers sound great now. But anyway, let's get back into this. So let's listen to, now let's listen to this signal through my amps. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go through the external output and I'm going to switch it to output 5 because that happens to be the channel that this guy is coming down, this reamp box, okay? So, let's take a listen. Now, that's instantly more alive to me. It's more, it's just incredible. It's, it's a beautiful sound. But in this situation, do I really need this to be that distorted? No, it's kind of over the top. And that's where the reamp box comes in. The reamp box has a level output control, okay? So at the moment, you can hear that it's kind of distorted, right? Which might be pleasing to some people, but I kind of want to back this off a little bit. So conveniently, that's why this exists. I can pull the signal down a little bit, and what this is doing, this is turning the input gain to the preamp down. And what this is going to do is get me a little bit cleaner of a signal. But it's not a super perfectly clean signal, and that's kind of the point. A tube amp does some amazing things in the analog voltage realm, okay? It, it naturally compresses your signal, it naturally adds harmonics, and it just makes it easier to mix, honestly, at the end of the day, and it just, it sometimes can make a really polished sound. Okay, so let's talk about mics and mic placement. So right now you can see I have three microphones that are in the view here. The first one is the Bumblebee RM6. It is a DIY ribbon microphone, one of maybe the best values I've ever found. I'll say this right now, if you only have one microphone, a ribbon microphone is going to capture the sound of a guitar amp in a more natural way, it's going to be easier to mix, it almost sounds finished by itself. Um, but you'll see by the end of this video why it might be a good idea to have multiple microphones. But this microphone sounds unbelievable and it sounds really great. And right now, the position of it is right on the center of the speaker. The Maz 38 speaker is just a tiny bit offset to the left there. And so it's right on the center of the speaker, the center cone. Now the microphone to the right of it is obviously the SM57, the most classic microphone uh, that you'll see uh, miking guitar amps, okay? And so it's off the center of the speaker. Now this placement is nice because you can get a much warmer sound, it won't sound as brittle, and you can kind of get the side of the speaker. And then the third microphone that we have is the Lewitt LCT440. It is a really, really nice condenser microphone, and it's just, it's very, very bright. It captures the quality the bright quality of the room, okay? So in this situation, what I'm doing is I'm, I've got two close mics, and then I've got a mic a little bit farther away to, to get the room sound, like my studio sound, right? And I should say, full disclosure, the reason that my voice sounds a little silly today is because I, I'm using all my mic stands that I have in the house um, on the amp right now, okay? Awesome. So that's what I've got going on. Let's go ahead and take a take. So let me show you how I would set this up. So I would go ahead and hit Command-T three times, and I'm going to make three tracks in Ableton. So the first one will be 
the RM6. The second one will be the SM57. And the third one will be, of course, the LCT440. Okay, so now I can click on the first one, shift click on the last one, and then arm all three of these tracks. Now I need to pick the inputs, okay? So the input of the SM57 happens to be number three, and the input of the LCT is number four. So now I'm set up to record. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got this recorded, let's just take a look at what's going on here. You can see what I'm talking about with that natural compression, especially with this little guy right here, this. Now, it's it's interesting. The harder I hit with my dry signal, the more compressed the signal gets. It's just that magic of the analog tube, and really, honestly, any saturation used, even in the digital realm, will do this to a certain degree. So let's take a listen to each one of the individual microphones. So here's the RM6 and you'll hear how instantly pleasing the sound is. Now, if I just had a ribbon mic by itself, this is the position that I would leave it in because essentially a ribbon mic tends to be pretty dark, meaning that it's got a lot of low end into it. The proximity effect is very high. But in this case, because it's in the center, we are listening to the center cone of the speaker and so it sounds a little bit brighter than it normally would and now it sounds like a balanced signal. Now let's listen to the SM57. Now, the SM57 does sound boxy, right? Um, it sounds, there's less uh, fidelity, right? There's less lows and less highs than the RM6. So the RM6 sounds like as if you were taking a box off of your head. But in a lot of ways, the SM57 is vibey, okay? It's got a signature sound. It's got kind of a more retro sound to it, right? And so that's pretty nice. And now the LCT, take a listen to this. Ooh. Now, to me, the LCT actually sounds really, really nice. I love this microphone. I, I keep finding it my, it's my favorite microphone for recording like Foley sounds, like uh, crinkling paper up and doing all kinds of stuff because it's just so detailed. But in this situation, you can really hear the room. Take a listen again. Awesome. Now. You've heard all these microphones individually. Let's listen to these microphones together. So one thing I like to do is click on the first one, shift click on the last one, right click and go to group. And now I can just solo the group. So this is, we're gonna call this ribbon center. All right, and now let's go ahead and listen to this. So here's where some technique comes in. This RM6 is a really good sound, right? Really, really nice sound. Let's go ahead and add the SM57. Now something odd is happening. When I add the SM signal, the entire thing is getting darker. That's because there may be some phase shift going on. So something that I can do is I can go into my utilities and I can grab a utility here and I'll put that on the RM6. Now check this out. If you invert the phase of the left and right signal. This is essentially inverting the phase of the audio. Let's take a look, let's let's zoom in on a really, really low note here and we can see the actual waveforms. Now, you can see that oddly enough, the LCT, while it's a little bit behind the SM57 because obviously it's farther away, we have a phase inversion issue where the RM6 is phase inverted versus the SM57 and the LCT. So listen to the difference. I'm just gonna be listening to these two tracks, the RM6 and the SM57. Listen to what happens when I turn this on and off. Listen to how much better it sounds when I phase flip the RM6. Now, you can also do this in your audio interface. Your audio interface probably has a phase inversion, so you can actually record the phase inverted version. But one way or another, all I'm doing is I'm flipping the wave upside down and thus putting these microphones in phase, and they sound a lot better. Now let's listen to them all together. Okay, so now in this situation, we have another thing that's going on where the LCT may be a bit behind in phase, and it might make sense to kind of drag it forward in time. Okay, so you're, you're presented with a, a decent amount of options here. You could do any number of things, but what I like to do, if we want to try to line these up perfectly in phase, is I'll get close to the beginning of the riff, and I'll just 
click over here, hit Command E. I'm gonna hit Command 4 to turn off the grid and I'll pull this back a little bit. And now I can just slide this over until I like it. So I'll go ahead and play it. Now listen to how crazy different the guitar will sound just by sliding this wave back and forth a little bit. So one thing I could do is I could actually listen to my mix while I move this LCT until I like the sound. What's so cool about this is that we're actually using phase, phasing, phasing of the waves to mix the audio. Let's go ahead and, and, and take a listen to the whole mix, okay, and I'm gonna turn off the modeler version of this, and let's go ahead and listen to this. Now isn't that interesting? Putting the LCT before the other mics, for some reason, makes the signal a little bit brighter and have less of that low end. So I haven't even changed the levels of these microphones, much less touched an EQ. Now, check this out. I'm gonna collapse this. I'm gonna hit Command D. Now what I've done is I've just duplicated the same tracks and all my track routing and settings are already there. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete all these tracks. And let's go ahead and switch the microphone positions around because I think that there's a better way to do this. Okay, so now you can see that I have moved the microphones to what I think is a more ideal positioning. Now, what I've done is I've put the SM57 on the cone, okay? So now the SM57 is gonna sound a little bit brighter. The RM6 is now taking over more of the low end of the amp by moving it over to the side of the speaker, and I've backed the LCT up a little bit to capture more of the room. So now let's take a recording of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a listen to the difference. Now, the first thing that I know, I already know that my RM6 is going to be out of phase, all right? So I have my phase inver inversion here, and you can see that the signal, whenever it's low, is louder, right? You can see it that the signal is louder than the SM57. But when we go over to a brighter sound, it seems like it's about the same. Isn't that interesting? So I'm taking the LCT440 out right now. Let's just listen to the RM6 and the SM57. So to me, I like that relationship a little bit better. The SM57 is a bit brighter, and it's taking care of kind of the transients or the attack of the guitar, whereas the RM6, if you just listen to it by itself, it's that really pleasing low end. So when you put them together, you get... Now let's go ahead and add the LCT. Now we can hear that, that strong phasing. Now, when you back a microphone off like this, you're gonna have to mess with it a little bit to get it just right, okay? So this is really important. Moving it around, not necessarily putting the waveforms exactly in phase, you can do that if you want, but what I think is more important is just to try it out with your mix, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and mute this track, and let's go ahead and listen to this with the mix, and I'm gonna move this around a bit. It is right there. So let's go ahead and listen to this now that I've moved this around. Vibey. Love the way it sounds. So now I can rename this. I'm going to rename this uh, Ribbon Offset. Okay, so I know the differences between these tracks. And now let's go ahead and take a listen to this dry signal. And this is me just kind of playing this part. Right? So I'm going to send this off to output 5, which again is what my handy reamping box is being sent to, and let's take a listen. Now that sounds good, but again, this is where the, this is where this guy can come in handy, and I'm gonna go ahead and jack this up so we can get a little bit more gain. Now, did you see that? I didn't have to stand up and adjust my amp settings. I can now just juice my amp a little bit more with this reamping box and get this kind of grittier sound. Cool, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and duplicate this track up here, drag it down underneath of this track, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this ribbon center because I don't want that, I want this ribbon offset. And now that I've got this all set up, I can just go in here, delete these tracks from the other take, okay? And now I can just record all three of these. So let's go ahead and take a take of this track right here. Now, obviously we can see 
just what that tube distortion and that tube compression can do to the signal. We can see how much spikier it is here. Okay, so let's fly this through this a lot faster. So let's listen to the RM6 and the SM57. Let's go ahead and take the inverting phase out. Now, isn't that interesting? In this situation, for some reason, I prefer the phase inversion not on. We get more of a bright signal. Let's go ahead and listen to the LCT440 along with these. Now, that adds a boxy signal with that phasing, but maybe what we could do is try to move it and see what happens. Now that makes the mids cut a little bit. Let's try it this way. Boxy. Now that's nice. Cool. So I'll go ahead and mute my modeler signal. And now I have an amp recording of both of these guitar takes. And let's listen to what it sounds like now. So I'll go ahead and take both of my mic recordings and I'll put them together. Now I can turn these, I like to turn dry signal tracks black and just kind of collapse them and get them out of the way. And now I have my two modeler tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group my modeler tracks together. Okay. And then I'll group the ribbon tracks together. And now we can AV the difference between these two groups. So this will be the modelers and this will be the mics. And now we can listen to the difference. <laughs> And so it's pretty obvious that just with using these mics, I haven't done any EQ, I haven't done anything else. Full disclosure on the modeler, there's EQ, there's all kinds of stuff, there's a little bit of compression or something. With these mics just by themselves, they sound less brittle, they sound like they have more body, there's more vibe, there's that room in there. It just sounds real, right? It's just, it's really nice, okay? So I could go ahead and mess with that more, but let's go ahead and add some other things to this jam and talk a little bit more about reamping things other than the guitar. Let's listen to this bass line down here. Now, this bass line is big, wide stereo, sounds very modern. I don't know if it makes sense to reamp it, but we have this track here. Take a listen to this track. Now, this is using Ableton's analog, and in this situation, I think this could actually benefit some, from some reamping. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate yet again my same setup up here with the mic tracks and I'll drag it underneath of this. Now the next thing I'm going to do, of course, is delete all the tracks. And what we're going to do now is we're going to record the microphones listening to instead this analog track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send this out the output yet again that my amps are coming out of and that is happens to be external output 5 and let's go ahead and record this through the amps. Okay, so let's listen to the result. <laughs> awesome, so let's go ahead and, and see what we can do here with phasing. So let's listen to the RM6. Such an impressive microphone. I don't know, I just love the way that this thing sounds. Let's add the SM57. Let's go ahead and just listen to the RM6 and the SM57 together. So yeah, got, we've got a great sound going here. Now let's talk about something else. When you have multiple microphones, you have a really interesting thing that you can do when it comes to being able to get some stereo, okay? So I really like the way the SM57 sounds. So maybe what I'll do is I'll pop it out in stereo. I'm gonna move it over to the left-hand side. And maybe I'll do the opposite with the LCT440 and maybe we'll get a nice blend here. Let's take a listen now. And now the RM6 is kind of my low end, so I'm gonna boost this a little bit. And to make this drastic enough, maybe I'll blast this out all the way 45 and 45. Let's try that now. 
And maybe I'll grab an EQ8 and put it on here and find that one kind of spiky frequency around here that's driving me nuts. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. Now let's see how this blends with the rest of the track. So I'm going to put this back to the master and we're going to compare and contrast these two tracks together. We can hear that original really stepping on the hi-hats. It's really just kind of in the way. But now this really mid-rangey kind of vibey uh, analog track. Let's take a listen to this. Super nice. Really blends with everything else. And of course, I could do some things with the EQ to, to change it up a bit. Maybe I'll add a little bit more brightness. Cool, so just some closing thoughts. I know that this is kind of a crazy setup. I even didn't explain this guy. This is the Weber attenuator. This allows me to run my amp really hot um, and get that the benefit of running a tube amp very hot without having to turn it up very loud, right? So I don't wake my baby boy up. But I, again, I know that this is kind of a crazy setup, but you can get so much done with just one microphone and a tiny little amplifier. It's crazy how much more mid-range detail you can get when it comes to using mics and amps in the real domain. This is a great way to sound original very, very quickly. Um, you can reamp so many signals. You can reamp drum loops. You can use that as like a blending situation where you have like a distorted thing coming through an amp, but you're only blending it like 10% or something. The moral of the story is that by the time your track makes it to people, they're probably listening on less than ideal uh, systems like cell phones and computer speakers and stuff like that. And you better get the mid range right. And in that situation, this is a mid-range monster, okay? I am using reamping constantly now because I love the way that I can get a super original, really vibey sound very quickly. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you got use out of this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.